Welcome back to Market on Close. Let's get out of stocks. Let's go to that U.S. dollar, baby. The reserve currency still. Alan Nutman's chief market strategist at Agora Financial. So, Alan, it was pretty fun week. We had a, a couple pretty bloody days there in the dollar. Uh, then you time it with the big move in BTC. So we kind of had the crowd of dollar debasement folks shouting again that this is what we're doing if we're going to pump more money in. I mean, uh, where do you kind of fall on the role of the dollar relative to stimulus? Do you think it dropped because the market's getting ready for a deal? It dropped. I mean, we're in a downtrend in the dollar uh, that changed temporarily. But if you look at it, we've got uh, August, September, October, and we've been trading between 92 and 94. We've resumed that downward trend. So it was a big week for the dollar. Closing below 93 is really significant. That, that That's the halfway point. I try not to overthink it. It's a simple downtrend, and I'm respecting that. You're seeing some positive reaction to that dollar down, and that's been a big boost for commodities. Okay, so, Alan, except for gold, what the heck is going on? That dollar down, what? isn't gold supposed to be rampant right now? It's me the riddle. Is, it a, is gold a currency or is gold a commodity? It's like Bitcoin. It's like uh, a little bit of everything. So, you know, gold doesn't react necessarily the way it should a lot of times, and it took a long time. We were for a couple of years. There were so many things that should have rallied gold, and it never did until, you know, this last year so. Again, it's always an enigma wrapped in a riddle. But if you look at the other metals markets, let's look at U.S. Steel. Let's look at the big highlight on your uh, uh, on, on your up market update was Freeport McMoran making new one-year highs. I know we talked about that because you wanted to talk about copper week after week after week. Hey, where's my kickback on that, Alan? I'm still waiting for the check in the mail. <laughs> so copper did rally, and copper got about 320. Now. The copper play, we'll talk about Freeport in a second, but let's look at copper in the big, you know, the big picture here. Now, you were concerned, uh, I guess it was a week and a half when it pulled back and it had that pullback. And I said, let's see how it reacts. And it did bounce back above the 300 level. And that was very positive. And that was an opportunity to buy into a bull trend. And it did respond. And, it, and the risk reward was on the bull side and it come bounding back. Now, if you look at copper, 2011, it was at 450, and then it dropped all the way to two dollars back in 2016 and in 2020. So we got a, a double bottom here. The halfway point of that drop from the top, that multi-year drop, is right here at this 325 level. So we're very close to that midpoint. If it gets above the midpoint, then we can make another chase up to four dollars. So there's still a lot of upside in copper, and I think the key is the dollar down. Okay, so copper. I mean, it, but if just the dollar down, Alan, wouldn't be gold up to me. Something else has got to be going on here with copper, right? Is it a recovery? Is it housing stability? I know you're a technical guy, but I mean, the technicals just looking at copper versus gold, they look totally different. Oh, no, and I don't care. I'm a price guy. <laughs> I'm looking at how the markets act. I don't need to know why they're doing what they're doing. That doesn't pay me. All right, what pays me is predicting the price movement. And we've done that in copper. We've done that in U.S. Steel. We've done that in Cleveland Cliffs. Remember, we added that as a bonus trade a couple weeks ago. That's an iron ore play. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs made new one-year highs there as well. So it was about reward to risk. A lot of these metal stocks had been beaten and battered and just were trading sideways. And eventually they made a bottom and they and they bounced higher as, as a value play. Now, gold is, a, is its own thing. I mean, obviously, gold's come a long ways. It's taken a pause now and it hasn't reacted positively really when you thought it should have with the dollar down you know a lot of things were, were into that gold got knocked down 20 bucks here the other day just because the jobless claims weren't as bad as the market has had expected so gold overreacts a lot of times and it reacts on a delay a lot of times so to use that as a barometer you're really hard pressed in the big picture gold should move with the equity markets and we're in an overall bull trend so let's see what happens What happens from here. I like some of these gold stocks and these gold plays at these levels because, again, they haven't moved yet. They have potential. Potential just means it hasn't happened yet. Hmm, okay. All right. I like this conversation, Alan. I think we got to go. I'm getting told we got to go. We got another conversation coming up. But I like it. The commodities uh, on the eyes here, Mr. Nutman, watching Copper, Freeport, Mac Moran beating gold right now. But we'll see if it can get uh, oh, and Cleveland Cliffs. So it's and Cleveland Cliffs. Okay. And there's also take a take a look at uh, AA. So we want to also Alcoa. make sure 
Alcoa Aluminum is going to be in play as well. All right, you got it, Mr. K. All right. Mr. Nutman, K is silent. Don't forget it. <laughs> All right, appreciate it. Join us from Agora. When we come back, let's talk some more about the housing situation. Nice setup, right? Because there's been a shortage in housing. That's been one of the tailwinds. Home builders have been racing to build. How much more of this trade is there still left to go? They didn't have their best week here. 